Welcome back to the Xamarin Forms tutorial where we create a time tracker app. I'm Patrick and this is the Let's Create series. In this episode, we're going to work on the login page and dashboard page skeletons and get their pages and page models set up before we start working on the other pages and page models. Then we'll be ready to make our app pretty. So let's get into it. Let's start working on our login page. So we can head over to pages and expand that folder and we'll open up login page. In our login page, we need two entries, one for username, one for password. So we can leave the label, but under the label, we can just add an entry. An entry placeholder will just be username or email. That's fine. And we're not going to make this fancy yet, so we'll just say uh, username. And we want to bind to its text. And so we'll say text is binding username. And then we'll also make an entry for password. So entry placeholder is password. Text is binding password. And then we'll use the attribute for is password and we'll just set that to true. And that'll make sure that our password is not visible. It's not plain text. And then we have our button to log in, which will bring us right over to the dashboard page. And so now we need to bind to these in the page model. So we'll head over to login page model. And we already have our I, I command here. And we'll right under there, we will just make a private string username and a public version that we could bind to. So username, and that will just be get username and set with our set property ref username and value and so under there we also need a password so private string password and public string password and this will be the same thing just a get password and set with our set property method and ref password and now we need some kind of an account service or a login service. And so we can do that by going into services and we'll add a new folder. And we'll name this folder account is fine. And then I'll add a new class and this will be an interface and it'll be I account service. So interface, I account service. And I'll make another class, which will be the implementation. So just account service without the I. We want our account service, to, uh, the I account service to be public. And we want the implementation to be public. And we also want our account service to implement I account service. And now that we have that, we need some kind of method to log the user in. And so the, the first thing the method could do is just return some kind of boolean true or false so we'll just say task as the return type and this could have a bool as the result and then we could say login async and this will take in a username and a password so now that we have that method uh, declared we need to go into the implementation and we need to implement that method so for this kind of mock service let's just go ahead and return task.delay and we'll just delay uh, one second and then we'll continue with and this will just be uh, it'll take in a task and we'll just return true and this will just say no matter what you put in your login attempt was successful but maybe we also want a way to check username and password to make sure they're not null so let's go ahead and uh, check to see if username and password are, are null or empty. So if string dot is null or white space username or string dot is null or white space again and for password, then we will return false right away. So task dot from result and that'll be false. Otherwise, we can go ahead and wait the one second to simulate loading, and then we can return true. So that gives us our account service, and now we can use that in the login page model. So we can bring that right into the constructor. So we can just say I account service. 
and we can name it account service. And then under navigation service or above, it doesn't matter, we can just hold in a, a class level reference to this account service. So account service equals account service, just make sure they're different, I use an underscore. Um, and then we'll use a quick fix to just bring that in and we should see that pop in right under our navigation service. Now to make sure that the inversion of control container, the IOC container can resolve this, we need to register it to our page model locator. So we can go into page models, base and page model locator. And right under the registration for the nav navigation service, we can register our account service. So container.register, I account service and account service. And that'll register our uh, little tiny mock account service and now back in login page model on do login action we can just try to run that login service so let's make this asynchronous and then we can instead of skipping validation we can um, uh, do navigation so we could say var login attempt equals await account service dot login async and we'll just pass in the username and the password and then we want to check that login attempt so we can say if login attempt then we'll go ahead and navigate to the dashboard so let's cut this out paste it in here and we'll await it now that we're in an asynchronous method um, else we'll just uh, put a comment here for now as a placeholder and we will display an alert for failure we don't have any kind of dialogue service set up yet, so we'll just hold off on that and we'll just mark it as a to-do. So now that the login page has a reference to some kind of an account service with a login method, uh, we can put this aside for now and move over to the dashboard page. So let's go ahead and close login page and open dashboard page. And dashboard page is going to be a tabbed page. So we can change content page here in dashboard page to tabbed page. And since we changed dashboard page to a tab page, we need to go into the code behind and change it to a tabbed page as well. So if we open up the code behind, we should see that we have dashboard page extends the content page and we'll change this to tabbed page. And when we press save, we should be good to change content page dot content to tabbed page dot children. And now tab page dot children is not going to take visual elements. It's going to take actual pages so we can delete the stack layout and we want to reference our other pages that we have in this directory. And so we can do that by declaring the namespace. So we can say XML and S, which means XML namespace. We'll just call it pages. We can call it whatever we want. And then when we press equals pages IntelliSense is going to recommend some kind of option for us. And this option is what we want. So we can press enter. And now in here, I can bring in the first navigation page. So navigation page, and I can give it a title of something like time. It'll be time clock. And part of the X arguments that we need inside of the navigation page, which will be the the root page so x arguments and the only thing we'll pass in here is pages time clock page and then we can go ahead and copy this and we can paste it a couple times so we need we need four pages we need the time clock summary the profile and the settings so time clock summary profile settings and then we can change some of these names so let's change the second one from time to summary the third one from time to profile and the fourth one from time to settings and then we want to change the actual pages so in the summary one instead of time clock page we'll do summary page instead of time clock page in the profile we'll do profile page and then we'll change time clock page and settings to settings page and that should give us all of our pages and now we need a way to trigger that initialize method that we created in page model base. So if we head over to page model base, we'll see we have this initialize async method and our, uh, the children have the option of overriding this. Well, if they override it in our dashboard page, we don't really have a way to signal that the initialize method needs to run. And so what we can do is head over to the dashboard page model and we can actually hold a reference to each of the page models of the tabs 
in the dashboard page model. So we can say uh, private login page model and we'll just call it login PM is fine. And then public login page model and we'll just actually call this one login page model. And this will, the get will return the login PM and the set will set property using a reference on login PM and set it to the value. And we're gonna do the same thing to the, the, the other three page models. Okay, and when you have finished that, you should see something like this. And all we have is a private member and a public bindable property on each of these. So we have the profile page model, the settings page model, the summary page model, and the time clock page model. And so now that we have these, we can override that initialize async method. And instead of just returning base dot initialize async, we can return task dot when any, and we can just list out all of the tasks. And so the first task can be base dot initialize async with navigation data. And then the second one can be the login page model dot initialize async and then we can go right to the profile page model dot initialize async we'll just pass in null again and then we can do the settings page model dot initialize async again and we'll do the same thing for each of these so there's settings there's summary and there's time clock And I just realized we don't actually want to uh, have this login page model on the dashboard. It doesn't belong here. So let's go ahead and delete that line here. And let's delete it from the top. I'm not sure why I tried to include it in here. It doesn't belong here. Dashboard is only for those four tabs. So it'll be the time clock, the profile, the summary, and the settings. And with that done, we can delete this last line, this last return. And now we're going to have a problem because this profile page model is currently null. So we can make a constructor public dashboard page model. And we already have these page models registered in the IOC container. So we can just pass them in as dependencies in the constructor. So we could use each of them. So we have profile page model. Um, we'll just call it profile PM is fine. And we'll do the same thing for the rest of them. So we have profile, we have settings page model, settings PM. We have summary page model, summary PM. And we have the time clock page model, time PM. And it doesn't matter what you name these because uh, we're going to set them to our binded properties. So we have profile page model equals profile PM. And we'll do the same thing for the others. So settings page model equals settings PM and summary page model equals summary PM and finally time clock page model equals time PM and so that's going to use the inversion of control container to resolve our dependencies which are these other view models and while resolving it'll take any of the required interfaces and services and it'll resolve those as well so this is perfect and so now these are no longer null and then when this initialize async is called which is called from the navigation service each of the page models from the tabs will also get their initialize async called so that's perfect so dashboard page is done and that's where we'll end today's video don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments section. This is Patrick from the Let's Create series, and we'll see you next time.